In the Mesmer Chronomancer Elite trait line, there is a Grandmaster trait called Chrono Phantasma. How it functions is if a Phantasm were to die for the first time, it is instead resummoned and repeats the attack it does. Whenever a Phantasm would get resummoned from the trait itself, it would get dazed for 1.5 seconds. The resummoned only works once, and the resummoned Phantasm simply becomes a clone when it dies. There is a bug related to this trait that has been known for quite some time now. Said bug is whenever a Phantasm fails to complete its full attack sequence for no apparent reason, simply put. Say I use the skill sequence Phantasmal Swordsman into Signal Vether into Phantasmal Swordsman again, I would spawn two Phantasms from each cast of Phantasmal Swordsman, and each one of those would resummon itself upon death for a total of four Phantasms. If I were to get bugged, one of these would become a clone before attacking or during its attack, effectively giving me the effect of having three Phantasms instead of the expected four. While this bug can occur with any type of Phantasm, in this video we will focus on Phantasms created by our Sword 5 skill, Phantasmal Swordsman. When Phantasmal Swordsman is cast, a Phantasm is spawned, which we will call Phantasm A. Phantasm A will begin an illusionary sword attack, followed by a Blurred Frenzy, which does 8 ticks of damage to its target. After a moment, the Phantasm will initiate what we call a death sequence, in which all of its buffs are removed, then the Phantasm will despawn shortly after. With Chrono Phantasma traded, this death sequence will also spawn a second Phantasm of the same type, which we will call Phantasm B. After the 1.5 second days, this Phantasm will go through the same attack sequence, initiate its own death sequence, and despawn shortly afterward. The Chrono Phantasma bug occurs when the death sequence of an A Phantasm happens during the attack sequence of a B Phantasm. The B Phantasm's attack is immediately interrupted, and the Phantasm will initiate its death sequence and despawn. As stated in the introduction, one place in our rotation that this bug often occurs is in the Sword 5 Ether Sword 5 sequence. For demonstration purposes, we isolated this sequence of skills on a training golem and examined the logs using the EBTC inspector tool found in the GW2 Scratch log manager. We've included a link to this tool in the description below. There are two common occurrences when viewing this skill sequence in isolation, which we will go over in detail. For this first example, we cast Sword 5, Ether, Sword 5, and then step back to let the Phantasms go through with their attack sequences before they eventually become clones. If we look at the log, under Player Summary, Damage Distribution, and Illusionary Swordsman, you'll see that we only have 24 hits of Blurred Frenzy. If each cast of Sword 5 produces two Phantasms, and each Phantasm is meant to do 8 hits of Blurred Frenzy, we should be getting 32 total. What is happening here is that the death sequence of our second A Phantasm, or Phantasm 2A, occurs right at the start of Phantasm 1B's attack sequence. Phantasm 1B is interrupted, and it initiates its death sequence before the start of its Blurred Frenzy, hence the 8 missing hits in the log. Many players have found that casting your skills more quickly can help with mitigating the bug. If you press your buttons fast enough, you will get what we call a double daze. In this case, Phantasm 2A's death sequence occurs before Phantasm 1B begins its illusionary sword attack. So rather than being interrupted, Phantasm 1B becomes dazed a second time, and the rest of its sequence is lined up with that of Phantasm 2B. So you can see here in the video, we cast Sword 5, Ether, Sword 5, a little faster than last time, and our Phantasms become dazed at the same time, go through their attack sequence at the same time, and become clones at the same time. We can double check the log to see that we did in fact get all 32 hits of Blurred Frenzy. Looking through some more logs, we saw that at every death sequence, Phantasms were applying or removing a buff with the skill ID 3644. We were able to link this 3644 buff to the bug itself. Whenever any A Phantasm entered its death sequence, it would apply a stack of 3644 to itself, and that stack would spread to other Phantasms of the same type. If a B Phantasm received this buff from the A Phantasm while it was attacking, it would get interrupted and instantly die. 
we came to the conclusion that this spread is what causes the bug itself. We will talk about this in more detail later on. While testing the Sort5 other Sort5 scale sequence in isolation, we noticed that we were getting affected by the bug more consistently than in a normal bench. We felt that it wasn't quite right and that we should have been getting the bug more in normal rotations. We thought that there had to be a reason for this. At first, we thought it was lag or maybe the raw amounts of Phantasm we had alive, but both of these turned out to be false. After digging through more logs using the Scratch EBTC Inspector tool, we started seeing that certain Phantasms during a normal rotation weren't getting interrupted, even though 3644 was being applied to them. We did some more science and saw that these Phantasms had a buff applied to them, a buff with skill ID 3702. We found that this buff is applied to all of your illusions whenever you shatter, and somehow protects Phantasms from the effects of 3644. Here, you can see I cast Sword 5 Edge Sword 5, and when my first Swordsman gets resummoned, I simply shatter once to give it the buff 3702. And we can see that it did not get bugged, and we got the full 32 hits of Blurred Frenzy because of it. If we take a closer look at what happened, we can see here that Phantasm 1B should have gotten bugged, as Phantasm 2A had its death sequence, therefore the spread of 3644 during 1B's attack sequence. The only reason it didn't die is thanks to the Shatter giving 3702 to the Phantasm, rendering it immune to the bug. With our new understanding of how Shatters could help prevent the Chrono Phantasma bug, we decided to take a look at some of the different options for our opening burst rotation. We took an especially close look at what was deemed the standard skill order for a while to see where it had flaws. Some interesting things to note are that while Phantasm 1B is susceptible to 3644, it is protected by the one clone shatter right before exiting CS. This is why our opening burst could suffer massively if we did not get that shatter in time. Phantasm 2B would also be susceptible, if not for that 3 clone F1 before Gravity Will. Where things got dicey though, were with Phantasm 3B. With no shatters to protect this phantasm from 3644, we would often see lost hits of Blurred Frenzy here due to the death of Phantasm 4A. In this video, we will demonstrate how this opener is affected by the Chrono Phantasma bug. We make sure to get the one clone F1 in CS, and before and after Aether, we're casting Sword 5 before Disenchanter. Given this skill order and where shatters fit into the rotation, we see that we got 57 out of the expected 64 hits of Blurred Frenzy. In this next opener, I demonstrate a rotation I first learned from Lawitz's 41.1k bench from the last patch. This rotation swapped the order of Disenchanter and Sword 5 after each Aether and made it possible to get all 64 hits of Blurred Frenzy. A link to that benchmark is in the description below. Unfortunately, this opener was not guaranteed to get all hits of Blurred Frenzy. It would consistently perform better than the previous opener, but it was still possible to lose damage depending on timing. As you can see here, we only got 62 of the 64 hits. With the reintroduction of Zero Clone Shatters in the most recent patch, we found an opportunity to mitigate the application of 3644 with a strategically placed F3 Shatter. We saw that the Phantasm being affected would spawn just before Gravity Well and would receive the 3644 buff apply event somewhere after Weapon Swap. So a quick Zero Clone F3 during Gravity Well was enough to guarantee no Chrono Phantasma bug in the opener very consistently. This is the Scratch EVTC Inspector tool. We use this tool to figure out pretty much everything we know about this bug. Here we can see all the agents, which are the units that get registered, like myself, the golem, the rats and the birds, and most importantly, my phantasms and my clones. On this log, I did the skill sequence Sword 5, Elder Sword 5, so I have a total of 4 Illusionary Swordsmen. The first two are A phantasms, and the last two are B phantasms. When I click on them, I can see the events that happened, so everything that happened to my phantasm or that my phantasm did, like the buffs it spawned with, the boons it got applied, the movement it did, the damage it did, and finally when it died off. 
On the left of the events, we can see numbers. These are simply timestamps in milliseconds. Here we can see the phantasm got applied the buff of skill ID 49054. Whenever a phantasm gets applied this buff, it's when it enters its death state. Everything after that is to kill of the phantasm. It removes the buffs and boons it had and makes it disappear afterwards. Now the first thing we see right after the death sequence starts, so when 49054 is applied, is that there is an all stacks removed buff event for the skill ID 3644. We believe that all stacks removed buff events with stacks removed zero are indicators of when the game attempts to apply a buff to an entity which is unable to receive said buff. What we know so far is that 3644 is the skill ID for a buff that is responsible for causing the Chrono Phantasma bug. It occurs whenever an A Phantasm goes into his death sequence and a B Phantasm spawns, and it affects all other Phantasms of the same type that are alive at the exact same moment. As we can see here, Phantasm 2A had its death sequence at 76, 65, 587, and both 1B and 2B had 3644 applied to them at the exact same timestamp. 3644 seems to have no effects on other A phantasms, but the application of the buff is still present in the logs of those phantasms, as we can see here with the all stacks removed buff event. When a B phantasm is given the buff, one of two things will typically happen. If the phantasm is already in its attack sequence, the sequence will get interrupted and the phantasm will immediately despawn. Here, the phantasm didn't even get to do any damage when 3644 was applied, as we can see from the lack of physical damage events, and immediately went into its death sequence. The second thing that can happen is if the buff is applied early enough that the phantasm hasn't yet started its attack sequence, it will instead become dazed a second time before carrying on as normal. For example, here we can see that the phantasm spawned with 3644 and got the initial 1.5 seconds of daze, and then when the daze ran out, he got another stack of 3644 and simply got dazed again for 1.5 seconds. He didn't get interrupted, therefore he stayed alive. The exceptions to these rules are that the B Phantasm will be unaffected if it had either stability or the previously mentioned 3702 applied to it. As a quick side note, we did test this in game, and as you can see on the Scratch EVTC Inspector tool, this Phantasm has three stacks of stability, and when it gets applied 3644, instead of getting interrupted, it simply removes a stack of stability and continues its attack. For these reasons, we believe 3644 is the game's way of applying days to a newly summoned B Phantasm, and is triggered by the A Phantasm spawning it. It seems that the buff is unintentionally being applied to all the Phantasms rather than just the newly spawned one, and in cases where a B Phantasm is in its attack sequence, it is treating the days application as if it were being dazed or CC'd by an enemy, that is, its attack sequence is interrupted and immediately dies. It also seems as if 3644 and the Chrono Phantasma buff are mutually exclusive. From looking at the logs, we actually see that the Chrono Phantasma buff with the skill ID 29913 acting very similarly to 3644. When an A Phantasm spawns and is given the Chrono Phantasma buff, that buff will spread to all the living Phantasms of the same type in the same way 3644 does. Other A Phantasms receive a fresh stack of the Chrono Phantasma buff denoted by a buff apply event and a single stack removed buff event of the previous stack. B Phantasms, on the other hand, receive an all stacks removed buff event of the Chrono Phantasma. Again, we believe this means the game attempted to apply the buff to the Phantasm, but it was unable to receive it. It may be possible that the Chrono Phantasma buff and 3644 are the game's way of delineating A Phantasms versus B Phantasms, with the added side effect of 3644 applying a daze with each new application. Is it on? Yes. Well, that should sum up everything we know about this bug. Probably. Uh, yeah, pretty much everything we've looked at for the past couple months or so. It's been tormenting us ever since, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. But uh, who knows? Maybe this will shed a little bit more light on it. We're hoping anybody who's watched, especially people who've made it this far, Hopefully you guys got something out of it, and who knows, maybe we'll see a fix from ArenaNet soon. Is that it? Yeah, that should be good enough.